I'm trying to work out uh, the solution of, uh, of a basic, writing a basic program that will allow us to divide two polynomials. Um, I'm allowing the numerator polynomial to be uh, any polynomial with real coefficients. Um, and the denominator polynomial uh, is a linear polynomial. And I'm doing this uh, just to keep the problem a little bit uh, simpler uh, for the sake of uh, working through it. Um, I have an example right here uh, where I am taking a, a general fourth order polynomial with real coefficients. That's a sub 4, x to the fourth, a sub 3, x cubed, a sub 2, x squared, and so on. And dividing it by b1x plus b0. Okay? Now, when I'm dividing two polynomials like this, um, I can write it like this. I can say p sub 4 of x divided by my b1x plus b0. Now what this means when I write this out, what I'm looking for is I'm saying the polynomial p4 shown here can be written as the product of this denominator times the quotient polynomial q of x plus the remainder polynomial r of x. So in other words, p4 of x is equal to b1x plus b0 times uh, q of x plus r of x. So what I want to do is actually, uh, I, I, what I have done is to brute force out this division. Um, I've done a polynomial long division to find what the quotient polynomial is right here, q of x, and to find what the remainder polynomial is, r of x. Now I've had you do this problem for a general third order uh, degree three polynomial, which I hope you've done. Indeed, uh, it is a, a little bit more tedious, but it might be worth the effort for your uh, enlightenment to try to do it here for this fourth order polynomial. But I have the answer here. Okay, so q of x is, is given by this expression right here. And notice that the coefficient of x cubed is uh, a sub 4 divided by b1. Here's the coefficient of x squared is given by this expression right here. The coefficient of x is given by this expression right here. And then this is the constant of the polynomial q of x. Uh, and here is the relationship for the remainder that I get when I divide uh, p4 of x by this polynomial. Here's the remainder. Notice that the remainder has no x terms in it. That's because I'm dividing by a first order polynomial. It had, the remainder has no x terms in it. The remainder here it will just be a constant. So we'll be coming back to that later. And what I want to do is I want to figure out how I'm going to have my program calculate these values here for the coefficients of q of x, right? These are all the coefficients for q of x. So in particular, I'm writing q of x out in this form. I'm saying q of x, which is a third order polynomial. Why? Because we have a fourth order polynomial dividing by a first order polynomial. The quotient polynomial will be the, will be the difference between 4 and 1. So this is polynomial of order 1, polynomial of order 4. You take 4 minus 1, that's the order of the quotient polynomial. So we have q3x cubed plus q2x squared plus q1x plus q0. Okay, q3 is equal to a4 divided by b1. Okay, now notice that this, this is q2 here. This is the coefficient of x squared. The q2 is equal to this. But what I want you to observe here is that a4 divided by b1 occurs right here. Okay, this is a4 divided by b1. So I can write q2 as being 1 over b1 times uh, a sub 3 minus b0 times q3, that is, times this coefficient. So I can write the coefficient q2 as some constants and the coefficient q3. And let's look at the coefficient q1. q1 is given by this expression. Okay, that's this whole expression right here. Q1 is given by this whole thing. But notice that this term right in here, this part, this is Q2. Okay, 
okay, 1 over b1, 1 over b1 times a3 minus b0 divided by b1, b0 divided by b1 times a4. This whole thing is q2. So I can write q1 in terms of q2. 1 over b1 times a2 minus b0 times q2. And then I do the same thing for q sub naught, q0, which is this thing. I notice that q sub 0 is equal to 1 over b1 times a1 minus q1. So I have an interesting pattern emerging here uh, relating uh, successive coefficients in my quotient polynomial. Now let me pull this up right here. Let's talk about it a little more. So here's the problem again. I have p4 of x is equal to b1x plus b0 times q3 plus the remainder. Notice I'm not re writing the remainder anymore as a function of x because I've determined that there's no function of x, it's just a constant. So I want to find these coefficients, q3, q2, q1, and q0. And I've just figured out this relationship. q3 is equal to a4 divided by b1. q2 is 1 divided by b1 times a3 minus b0 times q3. q3, q3. That, okay, q1 is equal to 1 over b0 times a2 minus b0 times q2. q2, q2. And then, uh, so I, th this is, a, a, this pattern turns out that it, that it is very amenable to writing a computer code uh, to find the coefficients. And that, uh, notice that all these, the, this, this general formula for writing Q2 in terms of Q3 and Q1 in terms of Q2 and Q0 in terms of Q1, that the formula is of the same form. In fact, these constants appear in the same places in all the formulas, B0, B0, okay, um, and uh, this should be B0 too, um, B0, missing right there, okay. And uh, so the only thing that changes from one, one pattern to the next is here, this is an A3, and this is an A2, and this is an A1. So uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, and uh, let's see if there's a, a general relationship here. Uh, that I might uh, deduce for doing this, not just for a fourth order polynomial, but for any order polynomial. And that's what I have written right here. I'm saying, gee, looking at this thing and the way this thing works, it seems to me that I have, if I have a general nth order polynomial, I'm trying to find the quotient polynomial, which is of degree one less than the nth order p polynomial, that the coefficients are going to obey uh, this rule. The q sub n minus 1 is going to be a sub n, going to be a sub n divided by b1. q sub n minus 2 is going to be 1 over b1 times a sub n minus 1 minus b0 times q sub n minus 1. And so on, all the way down to my constant coefficient, which is q0 equal 1 over b1 times a1 minus b0 times q1. So, um, well, let me try then to incorporate this type of pattern for computing my coefficients in my computer program. Now, it seems what this means is that once I've computed this, um, it's now relatively easy to compute this and so on. So I start with this computation for the q sub n minus 1, then I use this result to compute q sub n minus 2, and then that to compute q sub n minus 3, and so on. So I have this sequence. It's a recursion relation. And now, if you remember me mentioning back way early on in the year, I mentioned one of the things that I've learned by studying so much mathematics uh, for so many applications in science and engineering, um, uh, signal processing uh, applications, optics, uh, is that um, we seem to find s the same kinds of patterns in nature occurring over and over again. And one of the common things that happens in nature are recursion relations. And like I said, the great thing about having these recursion relations is that it will enable us to write a, um, a program which will uh, be relatively compact and at the same time 
allow us to do the division uh, using uh, an nth degree polynomial where we can have any nth degree polynomial in the numerator. So with that now we'll continue uh, with the next video going into uh, the details of our basic language program. So until next time.